At Discount Tire, we know your time is valuable. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online. Did you know Discount Tire now sells wiper blades? Check out our current deals at DiscountTire.com or stop in and talk to an associate today. Discount Tire. Let's get you taken care of. Now I want to tell you about a podcast that can help you sleep. Created by a dad who couldn't find any sounds that would play long enough to last through a whole night of his baby sleeping, 12-Hour Sound Machines has episodes that mask outside noises, promote deep restful sleep for yourself and for your baby, and that help slow down your brain, reduce anxiety, and aid in thoughtful meditation. Join the millions of listeners that tune in every week to zone out the increasingly busy, distracting world around them. Just search for 12-Hour Sound Machines wherever you get your podcasts. This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2770, A Year Without Dating by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Welcome back to a Sunday bonus episode where I give you a little extra content from a podcast in our network that I think will also help you live a life that's a bit more meaningful and happier. And this episode is coming from Optimal Relationships Daily this time. So without further ado, here's Greg with the bonus post as we optimize your life. A Year Without Dating by Colin Wright of exilelifestyle.com. If you've read my work for any amount of time, you probably know that I regularly and enthusiastically engage in lifestyle experiments, which in practice means that I adjust the way I do something for a set period and then stop to assess what I learn from the experience. Some of these experiments are short-term and relatively simple. You can learn a lot from changing up your caffeine consumption habits or diet for a few weeks, for instance and deciding to avoid caffeine completely or relegate its use to a specific time frame each day is a straightforward enough system to implement. But even the simplest of undertakings can be revelatory, and taking the time to address something in your life that you'd like to know more about, or which you think could be improved upon, or which you simply haven't thought about in a while, can itself be of value. I recently undertook a larger scale experiment, which involved setting aside dating and all related activities for one year. I was newly single, and I realized that it had been a while since I had been solo in that way. Further, it had been a while since I took a step back and looked at the bigger picture when it came to that facet of my life. I also knew I would soon be undertaking another experiment that involved returning to the U.S. to try to understand some of what's happening here, and to dive into some fields and inquiry, learning to cook, for instance, that I'd been putting off pursuing for years. A relationship-focused experiment seemed like a good accompaniment to those other adjustments. When you travel full-time, you can become so malleable that, after a while, you don't even know what your default preferences are anymore. This was the case for me, anyway. I spent so much time renting other people's homes, living amidst other people's stuff, temporarily adopting the habits and rhythms of these far-flung places, that I didn't have a firm grasp on what I would do without those external influences on my behaviors and inclinations. Combine that propensity with the bending that tends to happen within relationships, where both people give a little to ensure that everyone is getting what they need out of the partnership, and you can understand my mindset at the time. I knew who I was, and what I enjoyed, and what I wanted out of life. But I didn't know what that looked like all by itself uninformed by another person in my life or foreign culture more as I could adopt. Moving back to the U.S. for a while and having my own blank canvas, my own flat, without anyone else's stuff and history already in place, would help me address one side of that. And eschewing dating for a time, I believed, would help me reset my relationship compass and get a clearer view of myself as an individual than I'd had the opportunity to see for a long time. If I'm being honest, I questioned the veracity of this experience from the beginning. A lot of people go without dating for long periods of time. It's not an unusual thing. What did I expect to learn here anyway? But, after the first month or so, the difference between not dating because you haven't met the right person or because you're too busy, and not dating as an intentional choice, became a lot clearer. This wasn't a matter of longing and waiting for something good to arrive and leaving a space in my world for that potentiality, just in case. It was about filling that space, using all of it. It was in some ways about spending the time I would have spent dating on becoming the person I wanted to be when I started dating again in the future. 
I'll be writing more about this in the coming months, but a few quick notes about the experience that I think are useful in isolation. First, it's easy to get caught up in the way things are and the way things should be. Not all experiences will be revelatory, but even those involving shockingly mundane things that we take for granted can result in an immense and valuable perspective shift. Second, everything is connected to every other thing. Some of the most practical insights I gleaned from this experiment had nothing to do with dating and everything to do with how I manage my time, how I see myself as an individual, and what I value. Third, you really can't be half committed to this type of experiment and have it work correctly. The first month or so, my head wasn't fully in it, and I didn't see the benefits or notice many changes. After that period, however, I deleted my dating apps, reallocated my time, adjusted my habits, and the realizations and changes started appearing with relative frequency. Fourth, friends are vitally important and become increasingly difficult to make as you get older. This is especially true when you don't have a school or workplace through which you can make initial connections in a new city. One of the big issues we're going to have to tackle as a society, I think, is how we develop and evolve non-romantic relationships throughout our lives, even as our communities become, for many reasons, more distributed and impersonal. And fifth, there's something incredibly satisfying about focusing on personal growth for no other reason than you want to. In other words, to be doing it for you, not for someone else. Other people will no doubt benefit from the improved you at some point in the future. But it's a different experience pursuing that growth because it makes you happy, rather than because of some implied responsibility to do it for someone else. You just listened to the post titled, A Year Without Dating, by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com. So, you open Google Chrome on your phone, you're hunting for a super rare first edition vinyl of a band you're obsessed with, when you're supposed to be working. But this site you tapped on seems pretty shady. And Daryl from IT just jumped up from his desk. Oh no, he's coming your way. It's a good thing built-in malware protection keeps you safe and sound. Not from Daryl, though. Sorry. There's no place like Chrome. Download Google Chrome on your phone. If you look around, there are so many ways to make a difference. At Capella University, our FlexPath format gives you a different way to earn your degree. Take courses at your speed. Move on whenever you're ready. Education should fit your life. Learn more at capella.edu. Yet another learning experience from the master experimenter himself, Colin Wright. Well, I've gone on here, and even more so on Optimal Living Advice, about how successful relationships are often regarded as our most significant contributor to long-term happiness. It's also true that taking time away from them like this can sort of serve as an investment to ensure better relationships in the future. A huge part of good relationships is the time spent outside of them, the time beforehand, in which we craft ourselves and take time to hash out our own values and beliefs on our own terms, regardless of what society knows as normal. Use Colin's tendency to experiment as a reminder that engaging in such a lifestyle will teach you a lot about yourself and thus help you to bring a better formed self uh, to all of your relationships, romantic and non-romantic. So thank you to Colin for a very inspiring post highlighting all of the adventure and possibility that life has to offer. We are going to end this episode now, though, and I thank you for being here, and I thank you for supporting the show. We've got a few more posts for you about parenting before the weekend, so be sure to come on back and listen tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.